How can you install Linux on Windows and Mac OS? OK, why might you want to use Linux for web development? Linux tends to be the operating system used in many production environments. As such, the popular web development frameworks like Node and Docker tend to natively support Linux. And so it follows that Linux tends to be the operating system of choice for many web developers. It is often possible to install and use such frameworks on operating systems besides Linux, and many people do. But to use them on other operating systems usually requires additional setup, extra tools, or slightly different commands. Many web development libraries, such as those installed through NPM, the Node Package Manager, assume you will be using Linux by default. Therefore, if you are new to web development, beginning with Linux is a good place to start. Ultimately, though, it is really personal preference as to which operating system you use for web development, but to remain consistent with current trends, I will use Linux in my tutorials and I encourage you to do the same. Hopefully, this video will show you just how easy it is to get Linux set up on your own system. Don't worry if you've never used Linux before. Linux is not really much different to any other operating system. If you've never used it before, it just takes a little getting used to. So how are we going to install Linux? To achieve this, we are going to install Linux into a virtual machine. A virtual machine, or VM, allows us to install Linux as if it were an application within your existing operating system, preventing the need to do a full install of Linux onto your hard drive. An advantage of this approach is that if things go wrong with your Linux installation, you can follow this video again in the future to recreate another Linux VM. Additionally, you can also create multiple VMs, which you can run separately or simultaneously, which can be handy when you want to have multiple development environments or where you are doing more advanced forms of development where you need to run multiple VMs to simulate multiple servers. Some terminology you may hear when talking about VMs is host OS or host operating system and guest OS or guest operating system. A host OS is simply the main operating system installed on your computer and a guest OS would be any VM that you create and run within the context of the host OS. One last topic to cover before we start is which version of Linux should I use? You may be aware that there are many different versions of Linux. These are known as distributions or distros. Some popular distros include the Debian-based distros, such as Ubuntu, and the Fedora-based distros, which include CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise Linux, but there are many, many more. Again, the distro you pick is really up to you, but in this tutorial I will use Ubuntu. If you're unsure which to use, this is a good one to try first. OK, so let's get started. You may have noticed that I am using Mac OS as my host OS. The process for Windows is almost identical, so I will just be showing you how to do this on Mac OS today. But if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. Right, so you're going to need to download a couple of things. The first one is VirtualBox, which is available from virtualbox.org. Um, you can click the big download button here or the downloads link on the side. Now, if you're on a Windows host, you'll want to download the Windows host version. And if you're on Mac OS, you'll want to download the OSX host version. Um, I've already downloaded these, so I won't do that now. Um, the other thing to download is your preferred Linux distro. I said earlier that we're going to um, use Ubuntu. Um, so to download Ubuntu, um, you click on it or hover over the downloads link and it's the desktop version that you want. Uh, now I recommend the LTS version. There's another version down here, but the LTS version is a long-term support version. Um, if you click here, you'll be able to uh, download that as well. So as I said, I've already managed to download these uh, before recording this. So um, the first thing to do is to uh, install VirtualBox. So let's double click that. Um, and it says here to double click this icon. Um, now the defaults should be okay for, uh, for most of you. Right, now that VirtualBox is installed, um, let's keep it for now, um, we can close that. Um, it's time to 
to install Ubuntu. Uh, so once uh, VirtualBox Manager is open, hit New. So give it a meaningful name. Um, if you type Ubuntu in here, it will actually select um, the type and version for you. In this case, 64 bits fine, but you can see there's all sorts of things in here you could choose. Um, which you may have to choose something different if uh, you've chosen a different distro. Um, hit Continue. Um, so I don't actually have lots of RAM on this machine, um, so I'm going to give it half of what I've got. Um, that should be enough for Ubuntu. Um, you want to create the virtual hard disk now. Um, VDI is fine. Um, choose to dynamically allocate, that way it won't take up too much disk space. It will just fill it um, on your host machine as, um, as you fill the hard drive in the VM. And... Uh, you want to give it a reasonable amount, so um, I'm going to give this one 50 gigabytes. And that's your VM created. So now we need to install um, Ubuntu into it. So, first thing to do is hit settings, uh, go to storage, then under controller IDE, click empty, and then click the little disk icon here. Um, and I've already chosen this when I went through it before, but um, basically you select the, uh, the Ubuntu file that you downloaded, click open, and uh, that's OK, so hit OK. Right, now hit start. Right, so the first thing to do is hit install Ubuntu. Um, you probably want to select this, but I won't do this for now, just for the purpose of this tutorial, because it might take a while. Um, and you probably want to select this as well. Um, so, uh, erase disk is fine. Um, it's not actually going to erase the hard drive on your um, main computer. It's just going to erase it for the... Um, for the VDI that we created earlier, so that's fine, just hit install now. And just confirm that. Um, so set your location, click continue. Um, I'm using a Macintosh keyboard. Um, you may just want to leave it on uh, the default if uh, you're not using a Macintosh. Now it's going to do the install. OK, so the installation is now complete and we can hit restart. So it's telling us to remove the media and then press enter. So we can do that by going into the settings. Go to storage. That's already ejected. So that's fine. So we can hit enter. Right, and there you go, the Ubuntu desktop. Right, one last thing to do is uh, under devices, click insert guest edition CD image. This will allow us to install some extra tools that allow um, us to integrate, allows us to integrate Ubuntu with uh, VirtualBox um, a bit better. So um, yes, hit run, it's found the image. Right, there we go. So you can make this full screen. When you're finished, all you need to do is uh, click the little cog icon in the corner here, hit shut down, and this will shut down Ubuntu and uh, close the VM window. There you go. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking like and subscribe.